reproduction as we all know is a means to introduce variation wherein two types of genetic materials from male and female individuals are combined together to form a new unique offspring that is not identical to either of the parent right now guys a typical sexual cycle looks like this wherein the organisms produce two types of gametes that is the male and female gametes these gametes fuse together by fertilization and produce a diploid cell which is called zygote and this zygote undergoes further cell divisions to produce a new organism altogether again right now guys this sexual reproduction cycle can be typically divided into three phases if we have a look at it so these three phases are pre fertilization phase fertilization phase and post fertilization phase so friends come on in this session let us have an outlook on the pre fertilization stage and we shall move to other stages in our future sessions guys the pre fertilization events include those happenings or those events which are prior to the fusion of the gamete so those events which occur prior to the fusion of the gametes are the pre fertilization events and the two main events that occur in the pre fertilization phase are gametogenesis or gamete formation and gamete transfer so obviously before fertilization or pre fertilization the gametes have to be formed and they have to be brought close to each other so these two events are part of pre fertilization events let's first see what is gametogenesis so friends gametogenesis is formation of gametes now what are gametes well gametes are basically haploid reproductive cells and these haploid reproductive cells are produced by the process of meiosis i'm sure you remember what is haploid yes exactly those cells which have a single set of chromosome in them as compared to the normal somatic cells which have double set of chromosome in them so friends the gametes are basically reproductive cells and their formation is gametogenesis now these gametes can either be exactly similar to each other so we cannot categorize them into male gametes and female gametes now such gametes are called isogametes and isogametes are usually produced in certain fungi algae etc but another types of gametes are not similar yes friends in most of the sexually reproducing organisms the gametes are not similar and they are different from each other and they are called heterogametes and in such individuals the male gamete is comparatively smaller it is known as sperm or antherozoid while the female gamete is comparatively larger and it is known as ovum or egg guys here the question arises that how are the gametes exactly formed well the answer to this i think you know and we'll just do a quick recap here that gametes are formed by cell division what are the two types of cell division mitosis and meiosis so friends the gametes are formed by cell division now as i said that gametes are always haploid and the parent body even if it is haploid or diploid the gametes are haploid now here i'm going to ask you something tell me in which organisms the parent body is haploid yes guys the parent body is haploid in organisms like monera kingdom bacteria algae and also in some bryophytes and fungi so in these organisms the parent body is haploid and in order to maintain the number of chromosomes which is n Yes, they also have a single set of chromosome in them. The mitotic divisions occur to produce gametes. So the gametes are produced by mitotic division in those organisms which have haploid parent body. And the life cycle in them is called haplontic life cycle. In these organisms, 
the zygote which is produced by fusion of the gamete is diploid and it undergoes meiosis to produce the parent body so when the parent body is haploid the gametes produced will be haploid only but they will be produced by mitotic division now moving on to the higher organisms so guys in most of the animals in angiosperms in pteridophytes in gymnosperms the parent body is diploid so here how will the gametes be produced yes the gametes will be produced by reductional division meiosis so in case of higher organisms where the parent body is diploid in order to maintain the number of chromosomes obviously meiotic divisions occur to produce gametes in diploid organisms specialized cells are produced in the reproductive organs which are called gamete mother cells or meiocytes these meiocytes are diploid and they undergo meiotic division to incorporate a single set of chromosome in the gametes and form haploid gametes for example in a house fly the chromosome number in the meiocytes is 12 So tell me what will be the chromosome number in the gametes which will be formed? Yes, when 2n is 12, n will be 6. Similarly for human beings, what are the number of chromosomes in the meiocytes in the diploid cell? They are 46. Then the number of chromosomes in the gametes will be 23. And if we look at the fern of your glossum, In the meiocytes the chromosome number is 1260 and in the gametes the number is half which is 630 So friends these were just some examples of the number of chromosomes in meiocytes and the number of chromosomes in the gametes and I'm sure any question of this manner put forward in front of you you will simply divide the number of chromosomes present in the meiocytes Now friends we know that gametes are produced in reproductive structures right and these reproductive structures vary in different members of the plant kingdom and also in different members of the animal kingdom and we have had a pretty elaborate discussion on these structures which are present in plants as well as in animals right so in grade 11 we have talked about all these reproductive structures Now friends based on what type of reproductive structure is present where in an organism the sexuality of organism varies yes friends if the male and the female reproductive structures are present in the same individual then such individual is known as a bisexual individual whereas If the male and female reproductive structures are present in different individuals then such individuals are known as unisexual individuals In case of flowering plants we know that flowers are the structures which bear reproductive structures in them that ultimately produce gametes right So friends in case of plants Bisexual plants will be those plants in which the male and the female structures are born on the same flower and such plants are called bisexual plants whereas unisexual plants will be those plants in which one plant will have male flowers and another plant will have female flowers so male flowers and female flowers are present on different plants and unisexual plants are also known as dioecious plants guys examples of dioecious plants are papaya and date palm so friends in the unisexual male flowers male reproductive part will only be found like the stamens so male unisexual flowers are called staminate flowers because they have only stamen in them while female unisexual flowers are called pistillate flowers because the female reproductive part is the pistil which is only present in them while the bisexual flowers will have both stamen and pistil in them 
and thus these bisexual flowers are the ones which are pretty common in nature like the hibiscus that you see here friends algae are usually unisexual but cara which is a green algae is monoecious or it is a bisexual algae in which male and female reproductive parts are located on the same plant while the female reproductive part oogonium is present above and the male reproductive part anthridium is present below it talking about fungi guys we know that the body of fungi is called thallus now bisexual thallus containing fungi are called heterothallic fungi while unisexual thallus are called homothallic fungi so this was about sexuality in the plants gametes are formed in the reproductive structures in the plants as well as in the animals now after gamete formation the gametes have to be brought close the male and the female gametes have to be brought close so the next process of the pre fertilization events is the gamete transfer guys in most of the sexually reproducing organisms the male gametes are small and they are motile while the female gametes are bigger in size and they are stationary now friends as i said that the male gametes are motile in case of certain simple plants like few algae and most of the fungi both the gametes are motile now if i say that the male gametes are motile then this means that there has to be a medium for their transfer right guys some simple plants like the algae bryophytes and also some pteridophytes they utilize water as the medium of gamete transfer now if water is used for transfer of gametes and the motile gametes are the male gametes obviously in the process some of the male gametes will be lost and that is why the male gametes are produced in large number yes friends several thousand motile gametes are produced and they are male motile gametes are produced several thousand times more than the female gametes friends in case of some lower animals also water is used as the medium for transfer of the gametes now if we talk about the higher flowering plants we are aware that flower is the structure which harbors the male and the female reproductive organs right now the male reproductive organs are the stamens in the stamen anther is present and inside the anther pollen grains are found which have male gametes in them and in the pistil which is the female reproductive part ovary is present inside the ovary ovules are found and in the ovules is present female gamete or the egg now how will the male gamete come close to the female gamete how will the gamete transfer occur in the higher plants well we have discussed in the angiosperms in grade 11 and i'll just explain this in a single line to you so the pollen grains are deposited on the stigma of the flower and this process of deposition of pollen grain on the stigma is called pollination so the gamete transfer occurs by pollination after that a pollen tube is formed which takes the male gamete towards the ovule in which female gamete is present now what happens in the animals guys there are variety of animals and so if we talk about reproductive structures variety of animals have variety of reproductive structures and so definitely each one of them has evolved a mechanism to transfer gametes in dioecious animals the male and female reproductive structures are present in different animals so male gametes are formed in different animal and female gametes are formed in different animal now they have to come close so variety of mechanisms have been evolved in order to bring about the gamete transfer in case of animals and guys the gamete transfer is largely sperm coming close to the 
ovum or the egg right this is what is gamete transfer so the sperm which is formed in one animal that is the male animal has to be brought close to the egg or the ovum which is produced in the female animal now this process of sperm and egg coming close to each other largely depends on how they will fuse in an organism whether the fusion will occur inside the body of an organism or the fusion will occur in the external environment so the sperm transfer from the male to the female gamete may occur by either releasing sperms into the watery environment or it can be by joining of the cloaca which occurs in birds or it can be from releasing out from the penis present in male to depositing it in the vagina which is present in female so the mechanism may vary and what will happen once the gametes come close to each other yes fusion will occur guys this fusion of male and female gametes to form a diploid cell is what is called fertilization so the next stage of the reproductive cycle is fertilization about which we shall talk elaborately in the next session and let us now quickly summarize our understanding of this session Sexual reproduction involves three phases: pre-fertilization, fertilization, and post-fertilization. Pre-fertilization events include all the events of sexual reproduction prior to the fusion of gametes. Two main pre-fertilization events are gametogenesis, known as formation of gametes, and gamete transfer. Gametogenesis is the process of formation of two types of gametes which are male and female gametes. The male and female gametes can be identical called isogametes and they can be different called heterogametes. The haploid organisms produce gametes by mitotic division while diploid organisms produce gametes by meiosis. The gametes are always haploid. Both male and female reproductive structures are present in the same individual then such individuals are called bisexual and if male and female reproductive structures are present on different individuals then such individuals are called unisexual In simple plants like algae bryophytes and pteridophytes gamete transfer occur via a medium which is water In higher plants Pollination is the means of gamete transfer. In case of animals, they evolve different mechanisms for gamete transfer.